I spend so much time on computers and other electronics that I pretty much don't do much else. From having my phone with me constantly everywhere I go and using it all the time. To the hours it takes me to edit a five to ten minute random bits of geek video. To all the time I spend working dealing with complete idiots that would know their ass from the hole in ground if I tried because they're dumb and they make me want to kill, kill, kill. Okay, go ahead, hit any key. I can't find the any key. Oh, come on, mother! To watching TV, which involves me sitting there watching Netflix or something on YouTube because I've got a computer hooked up and I rarely watch anything else, and of course other things I do on the computer that involve getting to know myself a little bit better. Oh. Ah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. The simple fact is I spend way too much time, and most of that fun time is spent dealing with Microsoft. And I've seen pretty much every version that mattered, from the old school Windows 3.1, which didn't supplant my DOS to Windows 95, which made me consider getting rid of DOS, to Windows 98, where I did get rid of DOS, finally. And I missed DOS 6. It was beautiful. To Windows ME, which is a bucket of suck. Suck! To the glorious and beautiful Windows XP, which eventually got to be so good that I truly missed it when they finally discontinued it a year and a half ago, and PEOPLE ARE STILL USING IT! To the hair on my ball sack, that is Windows and Vista. The glorious and beautiful thing that I use called Windows 7. To the interface hell that we call Windows 8. And now, Windows 10 has come! Yay! So today, I'm going to talk about Microsoft's newest operating system. And, as an added bonus, I'm going to tell you how to make it suck less. Here on Random Bits of Geek! First of all, before we get down to upgrading Windows 10, which, if you really want to know, unless you have some overriding reason that you don't want to, go ahead and do the upgrade. Both my kid's computer and my media computer for my TV, I've already done. I have two computers I haven't upgraded. My laptop, which seems to barely have enough power to run Windows 8 as it is. And my work computer, there's concerns about switching over to get the VPN working, which means I can't do it until I make sure that's sorted. So barring that, it's time to do the upgrade. But first, a message from every computer guy that has ever dealt with losing shit on his computer. Back up! Back up! Back up! Something I run into regularly. If you have things that are important, if you have things that are vital, things that you do not want to lose on your computer, make backups. Windows 10 is supposed to be pretty seamless and has been pretty successful in downloading and installing on most of the computers I've dealt with, including my mother's where it sat for 12 hours not wanting to go any further, and then suddenly it started working. But in the event that something goes wrong and you have to wipe the computer and start over, you need the backup! And there's plenty of options for backing up. 
Used to be you backed up on floppy disks, then came flash drives and portable hard drives. Now you got all the cloud-based services, big paid backups like Carbonite. Um, you've got things like Dropbox, which is good for syncing things over multiple devices. You've got um, Microsoft, of course, has their own. Google has their own. The point is, there is a way to back up everything. Do it. Every time before you do anything important and regularly if it's very important because when you call tech support and say I can't find my stuff because it's broke so it's time to install for you Windows 7 users an important thing going from 7 to 10 you Windows 8 people already know this bullshit, but there's this thing called the Microsoft account. Basically, it's an Outlook.com account, or if you have an old Hotmail, or anything of that nature, you use this to create the account that you'll sign in, and will associate, and happily, will sync and back up some stuff. Remember the backup thing? So... Important thing you have to remember, look into this, have it ready, know that it's going to ask for it, know that it's going to want to be online before you do it. Make sure that you have everything lined up, ducked in a row, everything's backed up, everything's sorted, and you're ready just to sit down and do this and plan to have an hour or two to do it. Because if you don't, you will be sorry because the computer will dick you. Dick. So make sure you have these things in hand before you start that upgrade. Or you could just click on the thing and hope for the best. Either way, it's going to install Windows 10! Yay! So let's talk about what you see when you open up Windows 10. The best part, they gave us the start button completely back. In Windows 8.1, they kind of gave us the start button in the bottom left corner, but... It was a start button that took you back to the ungodly and god awful and horrible and evil start screen from hell. <coughs> this time, it gives you a start menu like the old Windows 7, except that it's part classic start menu and part Windows 8 cluster. Back as it has been since Windows 95 is the taskbar with the start button in the bottom left, the time in the bottom right, unless you're one of those whack jobs that gets it on the side or the top or ask backwards and then you wonder why I'm having problems telling you where things are because you've moved them and you have no idea what I'm talking about in the first place when I say the start button that you hover over and it says start. So down the bottom right, things you're going to find, you're going to find your wireless connection like you always have. You're going to find... A new annoying notification thing, which is part Action Center, part whatever else. I haven't quite figured out. It's annoying and stupid, and I really hate you for it, Microsoft. If you go down and click on it as well, you'll get some new buttons down at the bottom, which kind of replace that charmless bar that Windows 8 had over on the right. There's even one that if you really want to, you can make this thing look like Windows 8. Watch. <laughs> Probably one of the best things they did is the search bar. This little thing right here. The search bar has been around since Windows Vista. It was one of the few things Vista did that was really, really awesome. They carried it over to 7 the same way. Click on Start. It's right above it, below all programs, where you people can't seem to look. When I tell you to go, what's right above the Start button? Oh, all my stuff. Okay, what's at the bottom of the list? Well, Start button. In Windows 8, they hid in the stupid charms bar, although you could get it from the start screen. But now, it's right there on the taskbar! And it somewhat sucks because it tries to search the internet half the time, which pisses me off. And because it tries to go to Bing. Because nobody uses Bing unless they have to. The greatest thing that Microsoft ever did was said, Okay, we have been stupid about... Internet Explorer for all this time. We're getting rid of it. Finally. Finally, Internet Explorer is no more. <laughs> the downside is that they gave us Microsoft Edge, which has half eliminated the address bar and pisses me off when they do this because they moved everything that I did know 
and now it's just as annoying, just a different browser. I still absolutely advocate using Mozilla Firefox or Google Chrome, whichever you prefer, as long as it's not the Microsoft product. More importantly, the Windows 10 Mail app, the Outlook 10 or whatever they call it, is the same recycled shit that the Windows 8 app was. So, no! Replace it! Windows Live Mail, the good old stuff from 7, Mozilla Thunderbird, anything but that, or stupid in credit mail, which is retarded. And lastly, if there's anything else that you could find that's not a Windows 10 app that you can replace, go for it, because the Windows 10 apps are roughly the Windows 8 apps, and we all know that they're tablet functionality, which on a computer is a waste of computer. So a few other things that you're going to want to add to your computer. If you do not already have it, get a good antivirus, AVG, Avast, I use both of them, both of those are great. If for some reason you manage to skip having one in Windows 8, do it now. Instead of relying on the Microsoft Office products, there's always OpenOffice, that's a good one. Other things you're going to want to do, if you do any significant amount of audio, significant amount of video, go for it. Find yourself the best player and editing software you can find. One exception though, the new media player seems to be pretty good. So if you're just playing basic video or basic audio, Windows got it right! Yay! Good for you, Microsoft! Now, last thing I've got to add. For those of you who have Windows Vista, you've got maybe a year and a half. It might be time to start looking in the next year to move to a new computer. If you're running Windows XP, do it now. Just get a new damn computer. Stop dicking around trying to limp that old shit along. I'll be giving the same advice to Windows 7 people when Windows 7 nearing its end that they need to get away from it and get to the newest operating system. Windows 10 is a good operating system. Windows 8 was a good operating system with a shitty interface. They're all good. But updating, changing, innovating, that is the nature of what we're dealing with computers and technology is all about is change constant unstopping change that will never end as long as you live it will keep haunting you and changing and maneuvering and adjusting and eventually you will be left behind and you will become one of the sad bastards of the universe that has no clue of anything and your life will be lost of course you could also just get a mac and well they still update and do the same thing but you pay more, and it looks shinier. Just don't go with Linux, though, unless you know more than I know, in which case you probably already have Linux. Or you can get a Chromebook. You know, that operating system that just makes you use all the Google shit. Huh? Huh? But of course, finally, there's the computer for the person that can't handle all this change. Here it is, your new computer! This is Random Bits of Geek, episode 1525, and I've already lost one f***ing light, so I kind of got a problem with my lighting. Not much I can do about it right now. I'm just going to have to shoot the episode and hope I can fix the green screen later. Um, let's take it out. I'll just have to hope I can edit it out and not completely f*** the dog here. I have to tell Lars one of his li I don't have a replacement, so we're done. I didn't put makeup on either. But the only thing I've put on so far is hemorrhoid cream. That's right, hemorrhoid cream. It makes your ass not itch like a mother bitch. Important stuff. Remember that, folks. Hemorrhoid cream makes your ass not itch and you don't feel like you've been butt raped.